my friends, this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension. And today uh, we're going to have an interview, well, actually more a channeling session with Matty Beats. Um, well, she is a wonderful, talented channeler. You know, that's her expertise, bringing in light language, healing, all kinds of good stuff, very good information. Um, and of course, my expertise is asking questions. <laughs> I'm just playing dumb and ask the questions. And we will be talking about the Oversoul. Um, all right, uh, Natty, let's just call in um, the your Oversoul, you know, uh, whatever this is. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a bit like a, a like that, that she's just up there waiting, ready. <laughs> it mm-hmm. looks a bit like, so I've had this with, uh, with my clients that I'm doing. Um, psychic development with it also they've all connected with their oversoul recently and we all see a similar thing it's like a wispy um kind of like a jellyfish um but like made out of wispy ethereal energy almost like a like a wispy fairy godmother type thing but there's no there's no unlike when i see my guides and stuff there's no face um it's literally just this beautiful wisp of energy it pulsates um and then from there when different aspects come in it's like I see them underneath and it's like they come out of the the main energy thing just so everyone can have a visual <laughs> and so that people know as well if they connect with this they can ask if it's their oversoul mm-hmm. okay so um, there are of course all kinds of you know definitions that we have to get clear about and so there is the there is source there is and we are part of source of course you know and there is let's say oversoul and then there is soul and then there is the individual incarnation. This would be a natty right now. And uh, of course, there is also the high self. And you know, if you ask me, there is a male female high self. There's also on the higher level, an androgynous high self. So you have an aspect pretty much on every dimension. Mm-hmm. So I would, first of all, let's say when we um, assume there is a 12 dimensional universe, uh, where the 13th dimension would be creator, uh, on which level would the oversoul reside? <laughs> <laughs> so they're, <laughs> they're, saying, they're saying that we cannot assume these things because, uh, <laughs> because they go uh, much higher. They're reminding me about the sessions I did recently with this 15th dimension coming in, um, that it, uh, it's hard to quantify um okay let me let me let me ask them yeah, to it's, it's try relative and right it. yeah, <laughs> so try and, qua- try and quantify it for our, <laughs> for our human brains okay let's see <laughs> so they're showing me steps of a ladder um and they're they're basically saying that it's all relative to um how to our ascension and our perception of ascension are on this earth so uh, we are climbing up higher and higher on the ladder which is why now 15th dimension is coming through um, as indeed before people perceived that there were only 12 dimensions or that they could only uh, reach so far up the ladder now we are seeing um, dimensions uh, and resonances uh, higher and higher and higher and bigger and bigger and realizing just how infinite and far away source really is. Um, in in relative terms, to make it clear for you, we are very close to source. We are not source, <laughs> but we are very close. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, so there is, of course, you know, already a paradigm that tries to you know, categorize creation. Uh, let's say the Vedic paradigm. Um, are they familiar with the Vedic paradigm? Yes, we are. Um, so according to the Vedic paradigm, where would you reside or what kind of beings would you be? We are made up of all of, of all beings. Showing me images. Um, we gonna we we can only work with the words inside Natalie's head, so we are trying to bring through images as she is unfamiliar with these terms. But feel you you black. If you can ask us more specifically questions that are uh, more that are easily 
to answer okay for them difficult uh, bringing through the words today man no i i understand i understand they're just show, they're showing me i can see like blue i saw like a blue centaur type thing um and there's there's something that looked a bit like a like a genie and yeah. something with a robe i mean <laughs> let me I ask the questions here <laughs> like i don't really have a reference for it so <laughs> mm -hmm. so are there first of all um beyond milky way galaxy are they contained to Milky Way Galaxy or are they beyond Milky Way Galaxy? Beyond Milky Way Galaxy. Beyond yes, Milky Way Galaxy. Far, 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 far. Uh, beyond. <laughs> uh, are they familiar with the concept of Mahavishnu? Are you familiar with the concept of Mahavishnu? Yes. So how are they in relationship to Mahavishnu? Are they on the relations are they on the level of Brahma or are they on the expansion level below Brahma? They said, think bigger, go higher. Oh, there is a, either in what's called the Vaikuntha sphere. They're saying, they're saying to put it in perspective that uh, all the things you're talking about are within, uh, within the oversoul. So there's, there's many different aspects and beings that are within, like underneath the umbrella. But when they are as a whole, it's much higher. When they break off into the individual parts, it, it, that's when it starts to filter down in, into things that we perceive and understand um, already. Yeah. No, I, I, okay. So, uh, are there um, in a realm that is beyond creation and dissolution in, in Hinduism, advanced Hinduism, it's called Vaikuntha. Are they coming from the, uh, the sphere of Vaikuntha? Yes. I can okay. see some beautiful. Uh, beautiful energy right now like bright whites and just pleasant crazy energy mm -hmm. it's very great yeah. yes <laughs> 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 yeah um, um. okay uh, so they're from this field yeah welcome uh, these are my people <laughs> okay now how um, do they compare themselves to the race to the what, sorry? The race. You know, they are yeah. like, uh, you know, their concepts, well, you know, you are a violet, you know, they have like seven or 12 rays, you know, um, in all of the entities, they're one of those rays. Uh, it's, can the oversoul be something like that? We contain all. And you contain all. So it is huge. <laughs> it's just huge. They're, they're saying that they can send, a, um, because it, uh, they're struggling to talk through me today. They want to send a rep representative that is a lower part of them to, so that it can talk through me. Yeah, that. <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, I've lost the power to speak, but they're wanting to send someone that can actually channel through me so that um, uh, the words will come out better. Um, so I'm just going to see who this is. Uh, just get that figured out. I'm just going to yeah. explain to the viewers here. Um, I mean, for something a really huge abstract being like this, um, expressing themselves through a human being is like you trying to talk through a mouse or through an insect. You know, how do I communicate <laughs> to a lower life form with much less concepts? Yeah, so this is the problem that we are facing right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Syri a Syrian. I've, I've never had, the, never channeled Syrians before. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit, but I'm, I'm usually Lemurians and Arcturians, so that's interesting. Us. Is this an aspect of your own soul? Is this an, yes, it's part there of my other soul. They're, they're all, all of them. <laughs> all, mm -hmm. all, part of, all part of the same whole. There's many, so, many, many of us. Mm -hmm. So there is no oversoul, let's say, for humans or for Pleiadians. You know? There's an oversoul for all beings. Is that correct? For all conscious beings? There is many there, there is many different oversouls. Everyone has their own oversoul. Today we we are um, uh, allowing you to contact with the oversoul of oversouls. When Natty uh. channeled the, the oversoul um, recent in a recent channeling, she was channeling her oversoul only. So her oversoul is made up of a collection of beings that are closest to her soul. However, we are trying to bring through the highest information for you today as requested. So we are trying to bring you through the oversoul of oversouls. 
I wondered why, because the other day I was channeling my over, so I'll find it. The words were coming through. So I was like, why can't it come through? We're going a lot higher, apparently. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> let's, uh, let's pay some respect here. So we're very honored that they're coming. You know, we are talking to the CEOs, the highest management. Yeah. So we would like to know. Um, so if this is your oversoul, do they have any governing function hmm, over, you know, uh, us here? They seem to be the CEO of this whole creations, and we are like on the bottom level, the so-called worker, the incarnates. And so how is the interaction, you know, from this oversoul, then to the smaller oversoul, then to the individual soul, then which also incarnates? There are many energetic structures that we... Um cannot yet comprehend that um, we cannot yet <laughs> uh, explain to humans to have them to comprehend. Uh, we send strands of energy and information through many different layers. Uh, as Natalie discovered recently in a session with you, Wolfgang, um, the communicator uh, beings that are between her and us and her and all of the other places. We too have to have layers that we go through to contact higher beings and higher levels there are many many links in this great chain and it has to go through the proper energies the proper channels the proper connections we cannot just go jumping over and jumping about although natalie does sometimes try to do so yeah she probably burn out if she contacted straight away there's too much energy yes right? <laughs> I just saw an image that just showed me a cartoon of a melting brain <laughs> It's like proper cartoon, like Ren and Stimpy style. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Message received. So um, do humans in, in some way actually interact? Let's say the Earth humans here at this time, do they actually interact with their soul or their oversoul or their highest soul in any way statistically? Many of them are beginning to. Many, many, many of you are beginning to wake up. Many of you, um, so many more people are connecting with their higher self, which of course is an aspect of their soul, is an aspect of their soul family. So many people connecting with guides, which is an aspect of their soul, an aspect of their soul family. Higher and higher and higher, you're all going higher and higher and higher. And yes, many people are able to connect with their oversouls now, um, many people without even realizing it. So um, those of you who are listening to this transmission and that we are bringing through, we're very, very, very grateful to bring through this information to you but if you um, try to go a little higher with each meditation with each um, session with each work that you do uh, with each time you connect with your higher self just reach a little higher my dears for you may surprise yourself and you will get there yeah let me um, just give a little comment here to a little higher so my way of connecting to higher aspects of myself is through the crown chakra and there is not one crown chakra, there are a lot of them. Um, I think they go about two yards up. <laughs> and so the more I breathe into them, I become aware of my existence up there, uh, the more I seem to be able to access, you know, higher aspects of reality, my soul, source, etc. So um, does the oversoul agree this that... Very this is very useful information, Wolfgang. We thank you very much for all of your work that you are doing here on Earth and for your fantastic explanations. <laughs> we sometimes struggle to bring things through in the correct English uh, as, <laughs> as Natalie is aware when she tries to edit our transmissions into <laughs> articles <laughs> in her terms to read in better English. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so they recommend actually to do uh, like uh, they say running love with heavens um, you know as I call it um, this is the way to connect to your oversoul so now what's the advantage to connect to the oversoul compared yeah. to the advantage to connect to your own soul to your high self they're showing when you were saying about uh, the connecting and stuff they were showing this is interesting. They're showing the, the chakras like you were talking about from the crown up, but then they're also showing like your heart chakra, but it's like coming up here. So it's like it's it's mm. almost like it's it's projecting out. But then it's going up. Yeah. yeah. So mm. and it and it's they're joining together like 
Yeah. So let's say if this is active, this is a certain vibration. Yeah? It could be expressed musically. Yeah? And then there is a resonance, you know, on another octave higher, and then there is another sub resonance. So, you know, these are all, all the chakras. This is all based on resonance fields. So, well, this is the other thing. <laughs> The portal into the heart, the, I call it the wormhole into the heart. Um, this is another way um, to connect to um, source or to oversoul. Is that correct? Yes, but not in the way you think. There, there is modifications uh, that can be done with connecting, uh, connecting upwards, thinking about connecting upwards through rather than through within <laughs> Any sense at all. they're showing me they're showing me connecting through here mm -hmm. through source mm -hmm. this way mm -hmm. and then they're showing me connecting this way that it's a slightly different no, no actually no no it's maybe um I think we, we're talking about the same thing. So okay. this is this is what I do, and just mm -hmm. you know, they can criticize. I gladly accept the criticism. <laughs> so you know, you have open the the wormhole, and then pull it up, and then yeah, <laughs> we we see you now. Yes, this is correct. <laughs> We understand energy so much more than we understand human words. Please forgive us. We all have our problems. <laughs> we don't understand your world. You don't understand our world. <laughs> and I'm just in the middle trying to stop my face from moving around in weird directions. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you. <sighs> so, okay. So, we have now, we understand now uh, how we can connect um, to the oversoul, so you, you you have this visualization in your heart. It's like Stargate. You open the Stargate with the wormhole. The wormhole does what wormholes do best: punch right through to source, through all the different dimensions. And you, with your breath and intent, pull up the love and send it up. Now, what's the what's the advantage of going higher and higher? You know, um, to the oversoul. There, um, we would like to also clarify that that is not uh, uh, as simple as just simply punching through. That's to um, clear and open this channel, as Wolfgang and Natalie know, because this is what they do many, many times over. Um, it, it takes many clearings and many activations. Uh, one of the reasons light language is coming through so much on this earth, as we believe was spoken about in a previous interview, is that it is a faster way of activating people and it is something that is more accessible. But um, we do need to have these activations and these clearings to be able to punch higher and higher and higher. Some people are, be able, are able to punch through very quickly. Some people have too much heavy, heavy, heavy trauma, too much earth, too much attachment to uh, reach that high. So you must let go of your anchors so that you can fly, my dears. Yeah, that is one of my questions, actually. Um, so how does um, past life regression, forgiveness, you know, in, um, those kind of things, and you're looking into your past life, see, you know, where aspects are stuck, uh, forgiving your enemies, you know, clearing ghosts, how does this affect the connection with your oversoul? You are clearing the timeline so that they do not connect, so that they do not tie your feet down whilst you try and float up into the air, <laughs> just like a hot air balloon. Uh, cutting the ropes of a hot, air, a hot air balloon makes the air balloon go higher. Every time you do a past life regression, an entity clearing, clearing cords, attachments, karma, all of the beautiful work that you guys do so beautifully here on Earth, and many, many, many others, um, you are simply cutting the ropes on that hot air balloon so that you can soar higher. Does this in some way benefit our soul or our soul, or is it just our earth life becomes better? It benefits, it benefits all, blah. it is for the benefit of all beings, for we can feel your ropes. 
um, higher and higher and higher. It doesn't matter how far away there is a chain reaction that takes place. Just as we are, <clears throat> just as we are able to send information through to you, you are constantly sending information through to us. Those ropes are not only weighing you down, but they are weighing a part of us down too, as we are all part of one, one oversoul. Mm -hmm. So let's see um, how we can maybe take advantage of this connection. Having a wire, you know, or direct ear of a CEO is always an advantage. And so let's say um, when um, Wolfgang states that he really does not like, let's say, any laboratories that do nasty stuff mm -hmm. to be in this reality, and they go and request this, um, for my high self or my oversoul, you know, being in the highest chakra, um, would there be one of eight million people? Well, Wolfgang, thank you for your vote. Um, there are eight million people also voting, and it may take some time before we can react to this, or um, do they um, react quite fast? Okay, let me. <clears throat> So you're, you're basically just to, to rephrase it so that I can ask them properly. You're um you're <laughs> it, it's that you're asking about like when you send up a prayer, right? Whether they're whether they're actually hearing you and acting on it, and or whether it's like a drop in the ocean or yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm much, just going to simplify that right down. <laughs> how much potency? How much potency? And how does the potency get affected from the level of consciousness from which you request? Oh, hang on, I think they're sending, sending, they're sending someone else in to answer this. Oh. <laughs> Expert. Hang on, we're, we're having a changeover. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, who are we having? Lemurians? Lemurians? Sure, Lemurians, I can fill them out. It's weird when I, um, they're all in different places. Always, normally everything is up here when I, I'm communicating with it. The Lemurians always come from the sides. It's like they're down here with us. Um, but I guess they're a lot closer to our vibration, naturally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yes, asking about prayers. Uh, okay, we can hear everything, all of your requests, dear ones, um, and we do our very, very, very best to answer everything that you are requesting in accordance with highest good, uh, but sometimes it is a little tricky because um, humans are very, very, very difficult to maneuver um, as we cannot tamper with people because they have their free will, of course, and their sovereignty. So moving things around can get a little messy sometimes. So just because things are not moving in the way that you are hoping, it does not mean that we are not hearing what you are saying and indeed appreciating and wishing for it with you. But um, it takes a lot more people and a lot more force to come together to make big things happen. So, uh, for example, combining light codes, combining prayers, um, having hold, holding holding vigils. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think that's the right word. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, and um, uh, ceremonies, mass meditations. These these things get things uh, moved radically and very quick because you are not only uh, activating your chain uh, of command, so to say, you are activating many chains at once. So it is instead of a drop in the ocean, we are the ocean itself moving things. Mm -hmm. So how about um, like uh, technology, like videos? So my videos, when somebody does the meditation, um, does this uh, multiply? I mean, there's like, what's this? 20, 30,000 people a month, you know, that do those meditations. And so I was wondering um, if um, these electronically transmitted um, vibrations actually have an effect. We, 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 we are very grateful for the work that you do, Wolfgang. We love your meditations, as does Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. um, yes, they make a very, they make a very, very, very big difference. They're making a huge difference in human consciousness, but it's not quite the same as um, as how collective light codes multiply unless uh, people are doing it at the same time. So your meditation okay. circles, uh, when you are holding a meditation, um, and the same as when Natalie does her light code sessions, these are times when it's combined light codes because you have several people all with the same intent, all with the same experience, asking for the same things, moving the same way. It is a little different with the recordings, although they are very, very powerful, and this sets off 
uh, a chain reaction of light that uh, spreads across the universe like wildfire, which is very, very beautiful to see. We do wish you could see how much light you're spreading and how far the particles go. Um, but it is, it is uh, moving in a different way. It's helping in a different way. So it's still making a large impact, but uh, in, in, a, in a different way to the same uh, destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. So one is more like one drop after another, the other one is simultaneously. And actually, for people that are watching this, I'm having a group with which I regularly meditate. But you have to be my client first. You know, those people in this group, they have been trained by me, they know how to run energy or love, they can access source energy, you know, and once you know how to do that, you can be invited for the group. So that this is going on. So um, let's see um, how many oversouls, um, different oversouls do we have like the ballpark, in, you know, incarnating here, you know, through their descendants uh, in, in, at Terra, in, in Gaia here at this time. <laughs> this question's too big for us to answer it. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is infinite. We can answer, however, um, mm -hmm. how many uh, souls are within a person's oversoul. Um, if you would like to know yours, Wolfgang, or indeed Natalie's. Actually, you answered my question. <laughs> I wrote this we down. We correct yeah. ourselves. We correct ourselves. Let me just double check this. Uh, are me and Wolfgang part of the same oversoul? Yeah. <laughs> We're buddies. <laughs> yeah. Are we, is this the same as a soul group? The oversoul is the, the same um, as the soul group. As, as what, 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 stutter. <clears throat> Sorry, come through. It's fine. Yes, this is the same as um, what many humans refer to as soul family, although there are many, many uh, fragmented and broken interpretations out there um, yeah, as, as people love to try and explain things that are unexplainable. <laughs> but yes, the same as the same as soul family, soul mates, um, twin flames, all, all of these things, spirit guides, all of your spirit guides are indeed part of your um, uh, of your oversoul and your ascension family. Mm -hmm. So um, there are people that are of the same oversoul and then there are people, you know, from different oversouls, you know, maybe Peter has a different oversoul. So is there a different type of interaction with people between people of the same oversoul compared to strangers? Yes, uh, although it largely Oh, they're showing me like splitting off in two. It's like they've got two different answers. Um, yes and no. <laughs> Can you... <laughs> sure. It, uh, um, on on the one hand, um, the connections with the Oversoul are so much more powerful. The shared um, the shared intent of this is so much more powerful. But on the other hand, um, it's all about energy because on this earth-based reality, you are all earthbound creatures. Um, you can achieve the same effect as uh, uh, people with your same oversoul, with people with different oversouls by matching your vibrations, by creating the same vibration together. So you may vibrate, resonate on the same frequency and be able to create the same power. Um, this is something that is relatively new uh, or on this earth in this time. This is because this is all part of the ascension and we are able to move energy in new ways. It used to be that only people as part of your soul family are, are able to create this much power, this much intent, this big wave across the world. But now more and more people are coming together ju and just changing their energy with intent. So if we can change your vibrational frequency of your soul to match that of another, to have a connection just like you would with someone from your soul family. Well, let me guess um, the process um, that I call running love, <laughs> where we, you know, exchange love from heart to heart, sending love, you know, pulling love. Would that be the way that you connect properly with people from another oversoul? This, this is, this is, um, this is one of many, many, many things that help. 
there are many things working on many different levels when two people connect get together and it can be something as simple as sharing a conversation and getting excited about each other's point of view working through problems together um, or on this very earth-based reality uh, and then working up to yes indeed sharing love channeling love um, channeling through each other's crown chakras um, tantric <laughs> uh, tantric energy and then even higher uh, as Natalie discovered with one of her clients um, having your higher selves communicate we we loved that interview there was a beautiful interview with with uh, Natalie and a client where their clients higher self interviewed us and Natalie's higher self this is collecting on a much higher level and this is just another cog in the wheel of um, helping attune someone else's vibrational frequency to your own so that you may share the same soul mission and make a difference and an impact in the light in the world. Thank you. Um, so let's say the oversoul that Nati and me have, um, does this also include other life forms than uh, humans, maybe plant life forms, crystalline life forms, etc.? Let me, I'm going to ask those uh, individually. So uh, let me see uh, for plants. Yes. Um, crystalline life forms. Yes. And many, many, many beings from many dimensions and many planets. Good. And um, how can we get the most benefit you know, in our, from our relationship with the Oversoul? by connecting with <clears throat> as many <clears throat> of the uh, so-called soul family as you can. So including uh, all of your spirit guides, such a small number of them are, in are incarnated on this earth. Many, many, many more of them are, <clears throat> are in spirit and indeed in other dimensions. So by simply doing this work and opening your psychic channel and connecting upwards with all of the different guides, all of the different aspects. We so want to work with everyone that we possibly can by doing this work and opening up to more and more and more um, and in, indeed integrating this so that it is, uh, it is not scary uh, and accepting that there are so many, so, so, so many more beings out there that have not yet been connected with um, because the frequency is challenging. Um, but many, many, many of them are wanting to connect with you. And the best way to benefit from this is by just connecting with as many as possible, being as open as possible. Of course, using your discernment, using the proper protection, the proper boundaries. But we are all waiting to meet all of you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. So there are actually two basic different philosophies, it seems. And um, you know, apologize if I offend anybody with my oversimplification. Um, but there is, you know, this one type of spirituality where you focus on source only, on the transcendent God. You know, in Judaism, for instance, you know, you focus on Jehovah and nobody else. You know, no fairies. <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, you have this one contact person, and so it simplifies life. Now, um, the concept that was suggested to me, I would interpret traditionally as a polytheism. Of course, we're not worshipping, you know, anybody of you. Uh, we're just friends. I, I call it being friends. I mean, if they want, they can come down here, <laughs> you know, and if you wanted, we could be up there. So, I mean, none is better than the other. And so, uh, but um, so having all these other many people can be very confusing and, you know, you get lost. Let's say you don't see the forest anymore because of all the different trees, so to say. Um, so uh, what is, you know, can they give some comment here? You know, meeting all those different people, getting confused and then just focusing on the, the, of the center of the core of everybody. Your, your higher self is always your first point of contact. Your higher self is the most important aspect to work with within this life. And um, we would not overwhelm you by all coming through at once. Indeed, it does not. Uh, meeting these beings does not mean that we will stay around. Uh, many of them, uh, as Natalie has seen, many of them uh, will just come through 
so that you can experience the vibrational frequency because experiencing that vibrational frequency of that being triggers an aspect of your soul which helps ascension. It may trigger a past gift. It may trigger that little bit of light or just raise your vibration just that little bit. So please do not think that you are going to, by opening the channel, you are going to suddenly be surrounded by all these weird and wonderful creatures, dear ones. Um, we, we do respect your privacy uh, and we indeed do not want to overwhelm you um, it may be that you have a connection for a second with with a being or indeed a human that shares your oversoul it may be a passing uh, person in the street someone who um, <laughs> someone who gives you a light to feel cigarette sure <laughs> someone who gives you a light to feel cigarette or you share a bus journey with it may be someone you have a relationship with that lasts two weeks or two years um, similarly in spirit and uh, in these other dimensions, it can be a chance encounter or it can be a guide that stays with you for a month or a year, just like human relationships. So please do not think that we are going to start crowding you. <laughs> no, it's, I think, a uh, you know, very good point was made. <laughs> you know, our, our reference point to absolute source is our high self. And um, there are so many other aspects and um, I as far as you said, the way I understand it, is when we meet an aspect, let's say from Sirius, and we have been incarnated with this, um, yeah, generally I find there is some karma there. Many of them are stuck, or they have some trauma that's still affecting me, and, you know, and I straighten that out, and see what kind of gifts they have, you know, and then unlock those gifts so they can flow, you know, through 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 me or through my client. You know, this is there's always a value in meeting other aspects of yourself. I also mm -hmm. find it increases the love. But uh, you know, my main focus is generally on clearing the trauma that's still stuck there. You know, when I meet somebody, you know, first this can I help you? How can I help you? You know, um, get this cleared up, and I think then the whole seems to be lifted up. You know, the personal integrity power, it's just like the balloon, you know, baggage is being shifted. Now, when we go really cosmic. <laughs> yep. They're so according... Yeah. They said, sorry, when you were saying about uh, having many beings having like car karma and stuff, um, they're, they're reminding that a lot of them, um, a lot of our one, the ones that we are really closely connected to, but there are many, many, many that, that there's absolutely, there's nothing to resolve or, or anything. It is, it's just, it's just the frequency. It's just the, the, that very connection with, with their energy. It's like a little spark and it's, it's all, it's all you need from each other. They need the spark from us. We need the spark from them. And, it, and it's like bee, fireworks. And then, it, and then it's, it's done. And that part of your, um, that part of your puzzle of your soul is fitted. Yeah, this is came up with another channeling on um, this, um, what's that, um, we did on the dolphins, you know, and they said the dolphins, oh, yeah. they're, they're, when we have a telepathic connection with our dolphin friends, um, they get grounded and we get more psychic, you know, because they're so psychic, they're space cadets. <laughs> they're always out there and don't focus so much on this earthly plane. And so we ground them and, you know, they make us more psychic. So there's definitely, you know, just energetically an advantage there. And I, I would say it's like tasting different wines or different foods. Mm -hmm. It's really enjoyable on certain, you know, connections. I mean, I always love when I run into unicorns. You know, when I call them or dolphins, I mean, the energies are just beautiful. And some people may think um, that I'm a nutcase talking about unicorns. <laughs> but little do you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, wait till. Wait Maybe till you are the nutcase. <laughs> you know? um, so, they're, they're reminding me also about the, um, what you just said about uh, like the spark going both ways. So, so helping them come through more, that it's exactly right. The, um, like both of us obviously help people connect with these a lot um and the the reason what they come through so strongly to me is so that i can also help them attune their energy closer to us so that they can come through to more people so quite often i've i've had like kenga my arcturian guide who i work with who i've been working with for like a year or so now he started coming through to to clients and other people that i've been working with um, and it's like he's able to come through to more and more people because he he's getting his energy is getting more attuned to us 
as well as our energy getting more attuned to them. So it's so it's not us just doing, which is this is interesting they're showing me because whenever I think about psychic development, I'm so focused on o- opening someone's channel, helping them go up. Um, I didn't think about the other way of connecting with them. You're also helping them come down, right? <laughs> it's like, guide, lower your vibration. Yes, yeah. eat red meat. <laughs> eat red meat. <laughs> Uh, they said it's not it's not um think it's violent not, thoughts it's not, it's not um it's not lowering it their it's not lowering their frequency it's just fine tuning it okay. <laughs> so we're, we're not pulling them out just a disclaimer we're not pulling these guys out of the sky <laughs> like, come down here with us <laughs> Just, just a lot of fine tuning needs to happen. Um. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's uh, ask some more personal questions. Here. And so Natty um, has a soul, you know, which is different than the over soul. So, uh, how many incarnations does Natty's soul have at this time as a human being here on on Terra? Let's just ask. Um. How many incarnations? Okay, so to clarify, they they um, does this include? Uh, they're showing me. So obviously, some past lives, my soul has been incarnated in several Present different people. Time. Present time. Present time. Present time. What was right the now? Question? Sorry, I'm <laughs> like I didn't. How know. many? Okay, so your soul, um, you know, depending on the power of the soul or the intent. And can incarnate many humans at the same time. At the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah so 16. They told, they told us that before. 16. We have 16. Yeah. And um, let's just ask quickly to describe to people how do you guys affect each other, you know? <laughs> They're showing me uh, like a seesaw. Um, boop, 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 boop. Uh, uh, who's that? Who's this coming in? That sorry, I think we're having a changeover again. Who are we having? Kenga? Hey, Kenga's coming in. My Arcturian. Uh, I mean, he's not mine. He doesn't exclusively. We don't have him on the chain, you know. Mine. Uh, <laughs> we don't. Uh, it's, it's, he's coming in with the collective. I can see there's more behind him now. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> so he's showing me a seesaw and the effects uh, the effects of action action and reaction are huge within um, so-called twin flames and people who share the same soul uh, you can you can one person can cry another person can feel it one person can stub their toe another person can feel it you, you may not be able to feel it as a stubbed toe, but you will feel that energy somewhere in your body. Um, it's very, very difficult to, on occasion, differentiate the um, the energies, especially when you start to get closer to your soul, when you start to get closer to your higher self, and indeed do this work that um, of ascension, um, the, the lines start to blur, the souls start to become more and more one, and it becomes harder and harder to differentiate between yours and another's suffering, and indeed yours and, another, and, another, and another's joy. This is why it's so, so, so important for the earth to rise together, for everyone to rise together. Um, it's not about leaving people behind, leaving other people behind, you are leaving yourself behind. Rising together, you are all rising together. Um, it's very important that we are bouncing joy off one another and not trauma. <laughs> yeah, I always pray for your twin, twin flames, twin souls. Mm-hmm. Very good. Now, do you also, um, is you also your, uh, your soul incarnated as, for instance, dolphins right now? Yes or no? Dolphins, no. Any other life forms? Whales? Yes. How many whales? Oh, hang on, hang on. That was a yes. That was a yes to any other life form. Sorry, ask, ask. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which life forms uh, that are most interesting whales. and important yes. for our club, people here? Yes, whales. Um, whales, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, now whales are interesting. Yeah, ask. You know, so um, 
Uh, can't you hook up with your whales here right now? Call in. Yeah, I hope people can feel this, the heart area. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now, please oh, plug in. Bad. Oof. Oh, they are. I mean, you know how polluted oh, the oceans are. Oh, it's going to make me cry. Jesus, yeah. Mm -hmm. So plug into a source energy in your portal and send it to them. <laughs> Kenga is sending down. <laughs> Kenga just put his hands out. This, this purple light just like shot, bounced into my head and then back out of the whale. Thanks. <laughs> they yeah. love... Um, um, uh, star beings, by the way, anyone who uh, is able to connect with star beings and able to um, get themselves to the beach or even you can do it in spirit. This is something I was doing the other day. They love being able to send healing energy directly to the earth and you can literally channel this straight through your body. Go and stand in the ocean, um, connect with your higher self, put your put all of your connections on, connect with your higher star beings, your ancestors and just ask for them to send through. You'll feel this current of energy going through and allow it to channel out of your physical feet into the ocean. It will make you feel amazing. Um, and then you can also bring the love from the ocean back to them so that they can experience because they they can't experience anything tangible, right? They can't experience all of the, the hard stuff that we have down here, but they're so interested to learn. They want to feel what the ocean feels like on your feet and the sand on your, on your feet and all of that. So you can do a really good uh, share. Just a little, <laughs> just a little, no, extra, no, yeah, I, I a little extra there. <laughs> I agree with you. I completely agree with you. The water will actually help in the conductivity of the emotions. Then this is an expansion of your awareness. You know, it's a, um, I don't know if anybody ever saw this um, video or uh, movie about Francis of Assisi, Father, Son, Sister, Moon. You know, this is, you know, a more modern version of this. You know, we are, these are all brothers and sisters, you know, sources our father. Um, so, are there any other um, parallel incarnations that are of interest, um, you know, to our listeners, please, for Natty? Ah, my oak tree! Ah! <laughs> oh my God, okay. no! All right, now this is going to be interesting. So, you know, in, invoke your old tree be in front of you and send source love. And just also our listeners. Um, Hang you on, know they're showing me an oak this. tree. Is this much? I've got my oak tree in the woods. This oak tree doesn't look like my oak tree. It shares the same energy and I'm, a, I'm the reason I'm so connected with the oak tree I go and see. It's like I'm able to connect with this source oak tree that is connected to my soul through mm -hmm. connecting with this other oak tree um yeah yeah, yeah. Um. so you have a key that you know it gives you a key to access the energy let's say if you're incarnated as a whale you can access whale energy if you have been incarnated as a dolphin you can ask access dolphin energy if you have been incarnated as a fairy uh do you, you have access to this reality you know, as a reptilian or naga, you have access to this realm. So it's a certain advantage to have incarnated in many different species. <laughs> E.T. as other. The more the better, because you can pull in onto their resources. I think most of mine E.T., most of ours. <laughs> You're oversold too. <laughs> <laughs> Starhopper, Starhopper. <laughs> yeah. I'm just they're just showing me so many so many different animals now saying they're they're all they're just saying they're all connected. I can see like a tortoise now. Yeah, ask whether you actually your totem animals are actually um, you know part of your um, oversoul. Some of them. Some of them, yeah. No, there's they're general. They they help all kinds of people. That is correct. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, a wolf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wolfgang is my name. <laughs> you're my other wolf. <laughs> you're my you're my help helper human wolf. <laughs> this is my yeah. spirit wolf. <laughs> the teacher, yeah. The wolf is the teacher, and then. Yeah. 
medicine wheel. So interesting. So uh, from a spiritual point of view, the spirit point of view, um, everything happens simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, um, clearing, um, you know, stuck trauma, clearing ghosts um, seems to be, um, you know, elevating the whole thing. So it's like a like a fire that burns and everything gets transmuted. The darkness, the heaviness gets transmuted into fire. And um, this is a constant process. Uh, you know, I mean, it's difficult for us as humans to to see this is all simultaneously. You know, we can we have to see it linear. You know, so we're liberating ourselves or part of us, so we're becoming more luminous. But so it has already happened. This is a, an event that's um, experienced with creation like um, in a synchronized way, or is this more like on an individual way? An individual way. <laughs> they're like they're like weird. They're like <laughs> because my my human brain struggles to grasp that grasp that concept so much. They're like, we're just going to answer the exact question you just asked. <laughs> An individual way, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it like um, that a whole oversoul kind of, you know, gets enlightened and then just bloops? And, uh, or is it more like souls get enlightened? It, it all happens. That part all happens uh, all together. The 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 spark of light uh, spreads up the chain um, uh, sim simultaneously. Um, you clear a ghost from you, you clear a ghost from me, you clear a ghost from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's all, it's all freeing. It's all freeing. Uh, uh, it's all freeing elements of the oversoul, as it's all freeing elements of the soul, like picking fleas of a dog. <laughs> Oh, great I hope no fleas got hurt here. <laughs> so, <laughs> we speak politically correct. Um, so, how does for forgiveness affect the oversoul? Forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness. Yeah. Someone else is coming in. Oh, I just, I just see my higher self. <laughs> <laughs> this is just going up and this, down and up and down. This is simple. Your yeah. high self can handle that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, high self. Sorry, what was the question? How, how does forgiveness, uh, forgiveness yeah. affect mm -hmm. the soul? Mm -hmm. um, or the oversoul? It, yeah. it, makes yeah. it, it makes it radiate, darling. More, more it radiate. It, it, makes the, it makes the energy. They're showing me like, like a jellyfish. Um, bloom, bloom. It's like forgiveness makes the, the energy um like swell so it makes the energy um forgiveness is more forgiveness is more on an energetic level uh than a soul level for example removing a uh, trapped spirit is more on a soul level forgiveness is more on an energetic and spirit level um however it does of course affect the soul um it has almost the effect of supercharging the soul <laughs> So yeah, the, more, the more forgiveness, the, the stronger and more potent the soul, the stronger and more potent the energy of the soul, the more the easier it is for an individual human to get in touch with that soul and to access the information and to do more of this work. Okay. Now, um, how do dark acts affect the oversoul? Let's say if I go killing around babies, you know, or um, smashing cats against the wall or something horrible. Um, how would that affect the oversoul? It shrinks. The energy shrinks. The energy, uh, the energy gets smaller and far away, further away. Therefore, for example, Wolfgang, if you were smashing cats against a wall, um, you would find it a lot more difficult to connect with your soul and therefore do the work that is required for ascension. Yeah, probably it would be a bad habit. So, um, would it, you know, basically <laughs> diminish my connection with the soul or would it also diminish the power of my soul 
No, I mean, maybe the soul stays transcendental. It doesn't phase us. It's his karma, and you know, I'm getting shriveling up. And, you know. <laughs> no, we simply cut you off. It's like uh, it's like uh, cutting off a yeah. It's, it's, you just get cut off. Like a, like a, a Christmas lights are all on individual circuits. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so you just need to replace one bulb, right? So if one bulb goes out, the rest, <laughs> the, rest, the, rest the rest still work. Um, but but that's higher up on a um, on a human on a human level. Ah, so the rest have to pick up the slack. So if you're if you're starting, say if you're smashing cats. Analogy. If, you're, if you start smashing cats, um, you're and you so they effectively turn your light bulb off because you're not feeding the energy into the soul. You're not doing the work. Your twin flames they have to pick up the slack. So they now have to chunk through um, the rest of your trauma. So um, say say as an example, if you and I were twin flames, and um, in our, one of our past incarnations in Egypt, someone was um, killing a bunch of people. You started smashing cats. You now can't go back to Egypt to, to clear that person killing all the people. But so it falls to me. <laughs> it's now my responsibility to go back in and clear it. So it's like it, it goes to the next person. So because because twin flames are all incarnate together and they all have this effectively the same past lives, um, it makes it it's yes, yeah, so it's passing mm -hmm. the buck, basically. Yeah, yeah right. Now, <clears throat> you know, uh, the the people that know my work, you know, they know this process about running love, you know, which is exchanging love from heart to heart through the breath work. And so what's the most effective you know, way, you know, to run love? Like, you know, should it be done with the oversoul from the heart up there, you know, have, running love with the heaven or, you know, in their opinion, you know, which way running love is the best? There's a unicorn coming in. <laughs> Like, hey. Tickled, tickled. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Whoa, I'm heating up again. Let's just see the most effective way of of, of running love um, <clears throat> is is straight through the heart. They're showing me straight through the heart. Um, they're not. Too they're too they're coming through. <clears throat> they're not able to talk through me. They 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 um they wanted to get involved. They want to bring through information. So they're they're going to talk to me and I'll I'll relay it. Um, they're also showing me. Um, but yeah, so, so through the heart, through the heart is the best way. Um, connecting with absolutely everything through your heart. So they're they're just showing. <laughs> they're showing me walking around my house, going like whoop at my plants and whoop at my phone and and whoop at. <laughs> so it's just like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh with with everything um and yeah so the same as this receiving it like like you talk about in your meditations with the like the the echo or the reflection of love coming back um that you can do that with with everything and you can supercharge object objects as well like crystals or whatever just mm -hmm. running love with them running love with them uh, and after um anything any heavy energy that is cleared from whatever you're running love with um it then becomes so supercharged that when you need a little love you can pick it up and bing comes back to you yeah so it's a habit uh, i paint my walls with love no. one more time So the walls just start radiating then back, you know, it becomes like a room, real cozy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just said, they just said, Natalie needs to do this. Yeah. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. while, you were, while you were doing that, painting love, the, literally you could just see this like a unicorn. I can, I, I can only see its head, its body kind of looks like a blur, but it started going like round in a circle, like, wee, wee. <laughs> So it was making me go like, oh, like, where are everyone's dancing in the love? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's good. <clears throat> now, if you're talking about love, let's also talk about sex, right? So 
it's a really powerful, you know, uh, it's like a drug, you know, super, super powerful. Uh, you know, so many people's life is just, you know, <laughs> turning around this, especially for men. And so there is, of course, good sex and there is bad sex, right? And there is pornography. So let's just um, see, you know, what oversoul, you know, what they have to say. How does sex, human sex, you know, and then the different types of it, uh, affect the oversoul or the soul? <laughs> I think this is Goddess Aphrodite coming in. She is beautiful. Um, so what was the question? How does how does sex affect the soul? God, such calming energy compared to what the unicorn was just doing to me and all sweating and everything. She's just, just this flowing energy in front of me. Everything's just gone, ah. <laughs> like, it's gonna access the sex. Ah, yeah, like, ah, <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like I just had sex, <laughs> right? Instant grounding, amazing. Okay, <sighs> okay, how does sex affect the soul? It very much depends. So, she's gonna again pass the messages to me, and I'm gonna pass them through. Um, so it very, it very much depends, um, on the sex, on the connection, on the person. On, on the on the soul um, indeed soul connections uh, people from your same soul family uh, these vibrations get sent right up the chain um, but it also uh, depends on how much karmic crap you have in the middle of that uh, in the middle of that connection and whether the whether the sex you are experiencing is in accordance with your highest good so this is when it we take it right 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 down back to the 3d levels um back to our the physical human reality on earth of whether or not this person is the right person for you to be having sex with in this moment in accordance with your highest uh timeline okay so let's go through different scenarios let's uh, start on the with the best. <laughs> so um, the other person is, let's say, somebody from our soul group. And actually, these are yogis. So they, are, they have their crown chakra open, they are grounded, and they have their heart chakra open. So this is kind of ideal. So they're, you know, running love, like white tantra style. How does that affect the soul? Ooh. So She's saying that um, when we're talking about soul connection sex, there's, there's different types. And it, it, it also depends on what level of ascension that soul is at <laughs> and whether it's at the right vibrational match for you. So she's giving me the example of, do we need to talk about my personal life? She's giving me the example. <laughs> Go out to hundreds of people. She's oh. right. Uh, that's an question. We'll probably never watch it. Um, yeah, so it, it's like, I've had um, sex with your friend soul. had you know oh, somebody that <laughs> actually saying I can use this example because it's a little less um, I don't mind um, there was uh, someone who I had slept with a few years ago who was a was a soul connection but there um, because of our past life baggage and where their soul was relative to mine where their vibration was it was a really negative experience um, probably one of my worst experience personal sexual experiences in the 3d um and, and she, she's like this she's like yeah and it ended up um i, I mean let's see what what it, that did it, it lowered my vibration i ended up with attachments um i ended up with psychological trauma um they ended up with more car with with more bad karma because of what they'd done to me so that that's an example of even though it's just because it's a soul connection. I think she's saying this because um, so that people don't run around and just because they've recognized the soul connection that, oh, I must have sex with them or, oh, it's going to be the best thing ever because it's so many different factors. Um, uh, a bit on the other hand, so let's ask about if we meet, we have souls that are completely aligned and they're, they're on the right track and everything. Um, absolute fireworks. I can see like a lotus opening up. I can see fireworks. I can see a tribe 
of African people going, hey, I am. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> like, whoa, I'm up, give me some of that. <laughs> um, and in this case, it very much elevates the energy of your soul. Um, it is the, it is, uh, it is energetic signatures within the soul lineup. Um, new abilities open up. Uh, it, it increases the vibrational frequency of not just both of you, but your soul group as well. So, in in that instance, it's it's all it's all good, um, which is very interesting because that that's two very different scenarios with soul connections. One really bad and one really good. So um, yeah, so I think when it what she's making the point of is that when it comes to sex, yes, it's really important having a soul connection and all of that. But it's almost more important what is going on in the physical 3D. So don't spiritually bypass that shit. <laughs> if he's a dickhead or she's a dickhead, they're a dickhead. It doesn't matter how connected the souls are, how many past lives you shared together. You do not need to take them home. <laughs> yes. So there's no compulsory sex with so-called twin flames. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, so many of my clients, you know, they're definitely desperately seeking their twin flame. And I would say, you know, you should desperately start clearing up your act <laughs> so you're qualified. The more you're purified, the more you will become attractive and the more you're qualified for you know, a loving, successful relationship. If you're full of stuff, you know, anger, resentment, you know, with your parents and with ex-lovers, uh, you know, uh, what do you think when you come together with your twin flame and it's all sparkly and then all this baggage comes with you? His baggage, your baggage, <laughs> you know, the whole thing gets squelched by just the baggage, like a hoarder. <laughs> but also be prepared that you might do all the work in the world on yourself and you meet your twin flame and they're all the way down here and it ain't sunshine and roses and good luck with that crisis. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm the only person in the world that is not looking for another twin flame. I'm like, I don't want a twin flame relationship. They mostly don't work out. They're really hard work. And it's really rare that you find two on the same level. <laughs> it takes so much work from both of you. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I would say, um, you know, as long as you're yogic, as you're pure and you know how to use your chakras, you know, it, it's not such a difference. Yeah. You know, it's not such a difference. It's just uh, with twin flames, it's more maybe automatic, you know, that things, you know, fireworks happen. But if you have uh, somebody that's, you know, can play with their light body, uh, you're going to have fireworks when you're on the same level. <laughs> yeah, it's about, it's about at the, it's, uh, yeah, she's, say, she's saying that um, sex is, is so much more about energy than it is soul. Um, that soul, right. soul, is, soul is karmic. The, the sex is definitely is is energy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the cultivate drug. with anyone. Mm. Yeah, it's the drug. You know, it's the, the one of the highest pleasures you can have. It, it's so, more important finding someone with the same frequency than the same soul. Good, good point. Very good point. Now, how about porn? You know, this is a solitary sex, and uh, humanity has been swamped with this. You know, it's available for free. It's you know, the strongest drive in men is probably around sex. You know, maybe the other one is violent and we cannot be that violent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a big thing. It's I mean, this never happened before. No king you had access to so many naked women, <laughs> you know, whatever they wanted. You know, that was not possible. So but now everybody, you know, has access to this huge harem of, you know, virtual women. So let's ask, you know, how um, does this and, you know, affect um, the soul or the individual. I think it's important. Um, so she's reminding me, just nearly, nearly got a little bit of crying out of me there. This is a little bit triggering. Um, she, remi she just reminded me of some advice that I got when I was um, dealing with some sexual issues within myself. And I was speaking to another amazing healer and she was saying to me, um, which... Uh, uh, Aphrodite is clarifying that this is all the correct thing to say, um, that uh, porn has completely ruined sex because it's it's um, taught people 
uh, like how how not to have sex basically. So no one's having real <laughs> no one's having real sex anymore. Um, everyone is like she said it to me, um, sweetheart. You've never had real sex. Um, you go into porn star mode. You go into porn star natty, and you do what you think men want. And what men think they want is what they see on the fucking TV. So it's like lowered the vibration of everything. Um, women end up uh, dis- disregarding their feminine power, their um, that that energy, the the realest part of them, because they are more concerned about um, how much fucking gymnastics they can do and what position they can get and how far they can get their legs behind their head. All of that. Men are more concerned about um, just coming just just doing whatever they can to come and make making women do whatever and also how whether they're looking good it's become it's like brought so much ego into sex uh and and so so just saying so 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 many people on this earth need to bring it back to its purest state but what porn is doing as an industry it's it's removed us so fucking far away from what sex should be um, which is, I mean, it's the act of, it's the act of creation. It's creating energy, not just necessarily for a child, but it's creating this beautiful energy, which indeed lights up your chakras, lights up the soul. Um, but it, it has the same effect, um, this disconnecting effect, you know, like about the, like with the light bulbs we were talking about earlier, it's another thing that just disconnects you a little bit from yourself, from your soul, from your higher self. It's, it's lowering you that little bit further down. Um, and disconnecting you from reality so if you're sitting there jerking off porn all day um, you're probably going to find it pretty hard to have a connection a twin flame connection a soul connection or whatever and find someone who resonates on a frequency that you can have the fireworks you're just going to be having slapping skin (laughs) well plus you won't have any life force left yep Yep. you're wasting your life force you know your creativity Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So the oversoul, our soul, our individual incarnation. Hmm. Is there something that they like to tell us before we leave here? The Lemurians are coming back in. <laughs> the Lemurians come through a lot. <laughs> Um, we would just like to give you the message in this time space, uh, in this, in this now, in this reality for whenever you hear it. Um, we know it's difficult on earth right now. We are trying to help as many of you as possible. We are trying to help you rise. We are trying to help you ascend. Um, and we would just like to tell you all that you are all doing so very well and to hang on in there. It's making me emotional. Whew. Um, to hang on in there we know how difficult it is moving through all of the sludge and the the layers of deception of this 3d reality Um, and we know it feels like you've been in this forever and we know you've it feels like it will never end Um, but we promise you dear ones once you get Uh, over that giant mountain you're carrying there is so much light coming through and we are doing our best to bring through pockets of light amongst the chunking through layers of deception or or, um, so-called spiritual awakening and ascension symptoms as you call it all of the uh, negative things that people are experiencing of things breaking down around them realities breaking down um, questioning their life past traumas coming up, indeed karmic connections coming up to be resolved. Uh, All of this work that we know is so, so, so heavy and so difficult, but so necessary. And we would like to just remind you that um, you are doing this work, not just for the good of yourself, but the good of the whole world and the good of the universe. Um, As you have heard today, you have the power to affect so 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 many more beings and so many more energies than just yourself so although you may feel like a tiny ant in this universe sometimes please remember that you are a star in a very 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 big galaxy and you are a very very important part of that so if ever you get sad dear ones if ever you get disheartened um, and finding ways to light up your soul maybe is not helping um, call on us for help Um, Indeed, 
call on your other star families and just sit and close your eyes and imagine yourself as part of this big galaxy and just remember that keeping your star bright is the only job that you are required to do in this life. Um, please do not feel that you need to go and take on <laughs> take on the weight of the world. It is only your job to keep your star bright within this galaxy, within this oversoul, uh, within this planet. Uh, and we love you very much. Let me add my five cents to this here. Um, to be able to do so, you got to smile. The more you smile, the more you tune into the positive vibrations in life. Without smiling, you will not be able to receive any love. I demonstrate this to my clients all the time. The more you frown, the more you tune into the negative vibrations in life. There's always something dark. Yes, the fly always finds something that can eat. And just like the bumblebee, you know, finds the flowers. You know, they're both living in the same reality, but focusing on different aspects. So just by smiling, um, you will be open to love and you will be able to generate more love. And your world will respond differently to you than when you're frowning. Um, this is one of the most basic rules that you need. Okay, so Letty, yeah. um, you are an excellent channel. You are fun to be around. Um, uh, how do you help people? How do people get in touch with you and with what kind of stuff do you do nowadays? Uh, so my main focus, everything's evolved a lot over the last couple of years. Um, my two main areas that I focus on are psychic development, so helping people open up their own psychic and healing gifts, including channeling, light language, all of that, and building a soul-based business using spiritual business coaching. I do these things generally together. Um, I am also, as I've been doing lots of channeling with Wolfgang, trance channeling, I'm also really interested in starting to do this on a bigger scale. I'm getting quite brave saying this, but if anyone has any like uh, podcasts or anything that they would like to interview my guide through, I'm starting to get more confident now with um, with this, with speaking to more people. So feel free to get in touch with me for that. I definitely want to do live events as well. So if anyone fancies, you know, inviting me to a different country to channel aliens, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm game. Let's go. Um, if you'd like to contact me, contact me on um, Instagram and through my email, which Wolfgang will stick down below. Thank you, Wolfgang. <laughs> you are welcome. And of course, um, you see my work here right now. I'm the one that asks the questions, the stupid one, you know, that doesn't know any, anything. And then, voila, you know, we see what comes up. So, you know, I'm helping people left and right to wake up and it's going so fast nowadays. So yep. if you get the funds and you know you have some blocks and you're psychic, I mean, don't sit on the money. I mean, spend the money and, you know, otherwise you're just wasting your life, you know, to save a hundred bucks or here or there, <laughs> you know, like the time <laughs> of death, you buy yourself, <laughs> you know, right. being so stingy with yourself, I have to say, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the amount that people wake up once they had a session this is just tremendous you know? yep so um as you know so we love you and if you like this um you know and natty has a channel and uh, watch her stuff um, of course i have a channel um you're on it right now <laughs> and subscribe <laughs> in case you didn't know <laughs> <laughs> they might have zoned out with all the ets coming through <laughs> yeah, I'm a complete space case uh, right now, but I'm holding the energy, you know, it's, uh, it's um, still kind of on Earth. <laughs> yeah, and give us a thumbs up and, and, you know, and write comments. This is a tribe here. So, and, you know, you can express yourself and uh, I definitely read all the messages and, and try to answer. I love you guys. Love you so much. Thank Namaste. you.